Most people probably, when they think of a uh, Jeep these days, they think, well, you know, an old olive drab and a very Spartan, very few uh, uh, pieces of equipment, you know, that for, for comfort or what have you. But uh, uh, the CJ, when it came out uh, somewhat over 25 years ago, kind of changed the image uh, a, a great deal. Here became a vehicle that uh, had all the ruggedness and the, the ease of uh, being driven and what have you as this uh, World War II counterpart. But uh, here it added a lot of comfort. It had some styling that uh, made it a little bit unique within itself too. And it kind of caught on with the, uh, the general public. Uh, my experience with the, the CJ as such goes back quite a long time when I first started getting interested in vehicles. But uh, more in direct involvement perhaps was uh, uh, two or three years ago when uh, Jeep came out with the CJ7 and uh, our magazine, uh, Pickup Van and Four Wheel Drive, uh, saw fit to consider it for our Four Wheel Drive of the Year award. So we ran a, uh, a trip all the way from Mexico up to, the, to Alaska at the very end of the road and returned. I think some 7,600 miles in, in about 10 days, uh, to my knowledge, something that hadn't been uh, accomplished uh, previous to that. And so, uh, needless to say, I came very familiar with this particular vehicle, and uh, it's, I can understand why it has been so popular and why it has uh, made four-wheel drive so popular with the general public. Uh, it's a fun vehicle. It's, uh, it's unique within itself. Uh, it can take you into the outback and give you out of the smog and the hustle bustle of the city and everything. And uh, it's simple enough that your average uh, off-roader can take it out and, uh, and get back without having to worry about it breaking down and being stuck, uh, stuck for days. Uh, I think uh, as they have gone along and as most four-wheel drive vehicles have, they become a little bit more flush, uh, a few more extra options, uh, air conditioning, radio, automatic transmissions, stereo, that sort of thing has made it appeal to even a broader audience uh, than it used to. And uh, whereas uh, car sales seem to have gotten uh, all kind of reached a peak uh, perhaps and maybe trading off to a degree, uh, four wheel drive has kind of put the fun back into driving. Uh, cars seem to have so many restrictions and what have you anymore and they're just, uh, just not a fun vehicle to drive. However, you can take a vehicle like a CJ and other four wheel drive vehicles and it should uh, uh, take you out and to do the things you used to do with a passenger car it kind of takes you back to the old muscle truck or the muscle car days and uh, and puts the fun right back into it and with that aspect I think that the four-wheel drives will even be more popular in years to come than even they are now. Probably when most uh, people uh, hear the, the, the name Jeep, perhaps they, they think back to the World War II days and uh, the old olive drive, four-wheel drive, very Spartan-type vehicles that uh, helped get through the, the mud and the what have you uh, of uh, Europe and uh, the islands and what have you. But uh, uh, about uh, 25 years or so ago, the CJ kind of changed all that. It, uh, they introduced a vehicle that was uh, uh, quite a bit like its World War II counterpart. However, it was a, a little fancier in the trim and uh, a little bit more of a style, but it had the same basic uh, go anywhere uh, image that uh, people always associated with the, with the War II Jeep. And uh, uh, upon that introduction, kind of where all the off-roading uh, aspect uh, as, a, as a, a participant type activities all started, I believe. And uh, the CJ, uh, created, I think, the, the big demand for the four-wheel drive vehicles that we see today. Uh, it's, uh, it was a vehicle that uh, kind of lent an individuality to it, everything, not unlike, uh, uh, excuse me. Perhaps when most people uh, hear the word Jeep, the name Jeep, I, I think that uh, it connotates in the remembering back in World War II where uh, the old uh, uh, military vehicle, the four-wheel drive, was introduced uh, to get the troops, you know, through the, the bad weather, the, the mud and the snow and the what have you during wartime and everything. A, a vehicle that became very popular after the war as a, a kind of a workhorse, so to speak, around the farm or the ranch or what have you. 
Well, uh, a little over 25 years ago, uh, the CJ series was introduced and everything, and it kind of changed all that. Uh, here was a vehicle that looked a great deal like its World War II counterpart, but, uh, but a vehicle that had a little bit more style to it, a uh, little bit more in the, the way of accessories and what have you, and uh, kind of started uh, uh, the sport of, say, off-roading, uh, getting away from the city and the hustle bustle and what even getting into the, the outback uh, as, a, as an activity rather than just as a, a plain work vehicle. Uh, my experience with the CJ uh, goes back quite a long ways when I first got interested in vehicles. However, it kind of uh, came uh, to a head uh, more or less uh, when uh, Jeep introduced the CJ7 uh, a few years back. And our magazine pickup van and four-wheel drive uh, considered it for our four-wheel drive of the year award. And uh, consequently, we took, uh, took one of the brand new vehicles right off the assembly line, drove it from Mexico up to the Arctic Circle, uh, the very furthest that the road could go in Alaska and, uh, and return. A trip, I think, of some 7,600 miles. We accomplished that in about 10 days. So in that length of time, uh, and that many miles in such a short period, I became very familiar with this particular vehicle. And I, I can say I, I know exactly why it has been such a popular vehicle with, uh, uh, with the general public. It's a fun vehicle. It's fun to drive. Uh, it uh, gives you the go anywhere type uh, feeling that you, uh, that you could go anywhere with it and get back. You know, it, without uh, worrying about uh, breaking it down and getting getting stuck somewhere. Uh, cars, uh, it seems like in the, the last few years, due to various restrictions and what have you, are just not that much fun to drive anymore. And uh, four-wheel drives is, uh, has kind of changed all that. It's, it's a way to get back uh, in the days where they had the muscle cars uh, where it was really fun to drive. Well, off-road vehicles, and the CJ in particular, is a vehicle that, uh, that brings that back. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's as spartan as you want it, and also these days can be as plush as you'd like to have it with the air conditioning, the power steering, the stereo radio, and what have you. But yet it's a vehicle that suits many needs, and uh, still a, it can be a workhorse, but however, uh, more than that, it's, a, it's actually created a, an activity, a sport of its own. Uh, people wanting to get away uh, from the city and everything and, and enjoy themselves. And as long as I think uh, this vehicle can, uh, can do that, uh, I think this sport as such will, will be, become even more popular than it is now. And it seems like these days uh, the need is even greater to, to get away from the city. And I think the CJ is uh, one of the vehicles most instrumental in uh, creating uh, the demand.
the CJ Jeep. Well, uh, the CJ all started a long time ago, right after World War II. That's when the CJ-2 was introduced in 1945. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the uh, CJ stands for Civilian Jeep. The CJ-2 was patterned after the MB model that was the workhorse during that war. In the post-war years, four-wheeling became synonymous with the name Jeep. And in 1955, the CJ-5 was introduced. But four-wheeling, or jeeping as it was known then, was still a small sport and relegated to the very hardy few. When the four-wheel drive market uh, started to boom around 1974, the CJ5 was still one of the leaders in opening up uh, this new market for the people who were really into this very soul-satisfying family-type recreation. Now the CJ series uh, includes the very latest model, which is the CJ7. And uh, the CJ7 uh, is a new member in the long distinguished family. Uh, the CJ7 is even available with an automatic transmission and uh, quadratrack full-time four-wheel drive. The staff of a four-wheeler and myself were so much into jeeping that we decided to build a CJ7 for off-road racing. Uh, to build our race car, um, this is it here, by the way, we came down to um, Bill Strop, who's uh, one of the premier off-road race vehicle builders in the, uh, in the industry. We wanted to build a CJ7 for off-road racing because off-road racing is, is such a demanding test on any type of a vehicle, and only the, the strongest hardiest vehicles can survive. Well, the CJ7 that you see here that Bill Strop built has survived with flying colors and, and met every test that off-road racing can demand, and uh, the CJ7 has uh, taken it all in stride. And in America today, uh, the name Jeep has about become a household word. Uh, in fact, the CJ5 has become as familiar around the world as that ever-present VW Beetle that people see everywhere. I think the CJ5 has definitely made its mark in history, and I think uh, the best way to sum it up is probably the slogan that they use at the Jeep factory when they say, we wrote the book on four-wheel drive. CJ Jeep. It all started uh, a long time ago, right after World War II, when the uh, CJ2A was introduced. The CJ Jeep. It all started a long time ago, right after World War II. Uh, the CJ2A was introduced in 1945 uh, and was a close copy of the military MB model, which was the workhorse of World War II. Post-war years, four-wheeling became synonymous with the name Jeep. It was about 1955 when the CJ-5 was introduced. But four-wheeling, or jeeping as it was called then, uh, was still a small sport, uh, mainly for the very hardy few who could brave the off-road. In 1974, when the four-wheel drive market really started to boom, the CJ-5 was still one of the leaders in opening up the sport to the uh, family-type recreation uh, person. Now the CJ series has a new model that's uh, another one in the long distinguished line of CJ Jeeps. It's the CJ7, which is even available with an automatic transmission and quadratrack full-time four-wheel drive. The staff at Four Wheeler and myself feel so strongly about the CJ7 that we decided we wanted to build one for off-road racing. This is the uh, off-road racer here that we built. And to build it, we took it to Bill Strop in Long Beach, California, who's one of the premier off-road race vehicle builders in the country. We want to 
wanted to build a CJ7 because we knew that off-road racing was probably the most demanding test that a vehicle could uh, meet and uh, follow through on. We knew that the CJ7 could meet that demanding test, and uh, in the races that we've run, uh, we found that it did meet that test, and it's come through with flying colors. You know, in America today, uh, the name Jeep has just about become a, a household word, and the CJ5 is about as familiar everywhere in the world as that uh, ever-present Volkswagen Beetle that people see in every country. I think the uh, CJ5 has really made its mark in history, and I think the best way to sum it up is the uh, slogan that they use at the Jeep factory, where they say, we wrote the book on four-wheel drive. 